Hello students, welcome to the next session on joining processes. In the previous session, we had discussed regarding soldering and brazing, regarding their working principles, procedure, their advantages, limitations. Now let us move to the next uh, type of joining process known as welding. So compared to the soldering and brazing, it is also a same method of joining the two metal pieces together itself with the help of a filler metal or without a filler metal also. But here the work pieces are heated to a higher temperature till they get or they reach to the molten state or you can say that the work pieces are being melted and then fused together then they are fused together by the application of pressure or without the application of pressure to develop various components or for fabrication of uh, different types of material parts that is the vehicle components roll steel sections casting of various metals and many others also so more or less welding is preferred in maximum uh, purposes of the manufacturing industries and the principle here also involved is the junction of the two parts which you want to join them are heated and then joined together or fused together with or without the application of pressure if uh, we are applying the pressure for the joining of the two metal parts which are being heated above uh, 450 celsius that is around sometimes 5000 to 6000 degrees celsius then that type of uh, welding where the pressure is being applied we call it as pressure welding so here you can see that the parts which we want to join them we are heated to the range that they reach the plastic state of deformation and then they are joined or fused together by applying external pressure we call it as pressure welding or even it is also carried in such a way that they are heated to a temperature more than the plastic state and then the parts are again joined together and allowed to solidified without applying any pressure or there is no pressure itself that type of welding we call it as fusion welding normally we are preferring fusion welding for many cases and in some cases also we prefer for pressure welding depending upon the applications what we need for the next in the welding the very most effective method of welding type used is the arc welding process so generally we have studied even in the soldering and the brazing that whenever the material has to be the two metal pieces have to be joined it is being heated with a metal where and small arc is developed and the materials are being joined here also if you observe in the figure itself we can see these are the two metal pieces which you can observe here carefully these are two metal pieces they have to be joined already on the one side you have seen they are joining has been carried out effectively this is done with the help of an consumable electrode which you can see here in the sketch this is a consumable electrode at the center is the filler material which is covered or surrounded by the flux this chocolate color structure this is the flux so in this arc welding process when the electrode electrode is brought in contact with the two metal work pieces and arc is developed in the form of a spark and once this arc is being developed most amount of heat is generated that is in the form of a highly concentrated heat this electric arc heat developed is so much high that it is normally in the temperature range of around 4000 to 6000 degrees celsius and as it is moved from one end to other end you can see here in the sketch all in the picture also the welding is being carried continuously this is the arc which is being developed this arc has an intense heat of around 5000 to 6000 degrees celsius which is sufficient enough to melt the work pieces and this filler material gets deposited within the work pieces to form a permanent joint and it solidifies and gets solidified as this arc is being developed here you can see some shade like structures this is nothing but there are development of molten gases that is we call them as gaseous shield the gaseous shield is being developed to see that it prevents the oxidation over surfaces which has to be joined simultaneously as it is moved from one end to other end by the capillary action the arc goes on continuing it melts the filler material and solidifies to form a joint between the two work pieces 
So here in the picture you can see that there is a gaseous shield as uh, this electrode is moving from one end to the other end. You can see already here the joint has been carried over this weld metal joint. You can see there is some slag prevent. This slag is to be removed before it goes for further processing. And this you can see as uh, the welding process is being carried, you can see the metal is being melted. We call this as the weld pool. So generally we are preferring uh, the arc welding process itself for almost all the cases because it develops high amount of heat and it is able to develop with the help of an electric arc developed between uh, this electrode and the work pieces. So to develop the arc welding, generally we are using the machine of an arc welding machine, which you can see here. So the setup, it is in this fashion. This is the arc welding machine. So here the electricity is maybe supplied by the means of a AC type or a DC type. And if you are using AC types, generally we are preferring the current to be in the range of 200 to 440 volts, which is being reduced to 80 to 100 volts with the help of a step down transformer such that its current is in the range of 100 to 400 amperes suitable for arc welding. So if you observe in this picture here, it consists of the work pieces which are to be joined, electrode, electrode holder, then there are two cables, one cable connected to the electrode holder, another cable connected to the work piece and both these cables are connected to a welding machine. It may be an AC type or a DC type. So if you are using an AC type, again this welding machine is connected to a step down transformer where it is responsible for regulating the voltage control. But if it is a DC type of welding machine, then always or maximum cases, the positive pole of this machine, it is connected towards the work piece and the negative pole of this machine, that is a negative cable, it is connected to the electrode. Such a way that the positive pole develops more highest amount of heat through the arc which is developed at this end. So when the electrode is uh, uh, maintaining a small gap between the work pieces and arc is being developed, this arc developed it develops a heat to a range of 5000 to 6000 degrees Celsius which is sufficient enough to melt the work pieces. That is the reason that for maximum 90% of the cases uh, always the positive pole is connected to the work piece whereas the negative pole is connected that is the negative cable is connected towards the electrode holder this we call it as a straight polarity but in some cases if the work piece metals which we are using they are of different metals whose melting temperature is very very less then automatically we reverse this polarities that is the negative cable is connected to the work pieces whereas the positive cable to the electrode holder in this the vice versa can be carried out so in this way, we can understand the working of an arc welding machine. Sometimes even for some cases, instead of arc, we are developing the heat with the help of some flames, which is responsible for the mixture of those gases. We call that type of process as gas welding. So here in this gas welding, here also what happens, the joining of the workpiece itself is uh, taking place, but here instead of uh, developing the heat by the striking the arc, here a strong gas flame is developed. So the strong gas flame, how it is developed? It is developed by the combustion of the gases. That is uh, normally one mixture is oxygen and acetylene and another mixture may be oxygen and hydrogen. Here also we are using the filler metal to fill the joint such that the flame which is developed by the mixture of these gases on combustion it is responsible for melting the filler metal as well as the base metals to carry out a permanent joint. So almost everywhere the two types of gas available that is the combination available is oxygen and acetylene that is the reason that we are preferring this more maximum cases that is the oxyacetylene welding process. So here if you observe in this picture, there are two cylinders, one cylinder containing the oxygen gas, second cylinder containing the acetylene gas, that is the acetylene cylinder. Both these cylinders, they're connected separately to a gas hose pipes. These are, these are the gas hose pipes or the rubber hose pipes. And uh, the flow of these gases in these pipes, it is controlled by some regulators. You can see here, 
they are maybe the pressure regulator they are may, they are also having the control valves and again the entry from the cylinders into this device that is the mixing chamber which you are observing here again it is controlled by two valves on both sides one is the acetylene control valve one is the oxygen control valve and here the mixing of the gases takes place in this chamber which then enter through the torch and they are passing here at the end and as a flame is being developed this flame develop it is sufficient enough to melt the work pieces so generally we are using for the welding of the cast iron steel aluminium zinc based metals copper based metals as well as non ferrous metals also but depending upon the applications we are preferring the um, uh, types of uh, procedures so in the oxyacetylene welding process as i told you these two gases that is the acetylene and the oxygen are taken from the cylinder through these rubber hose pipes which are controlling the regulation flow with the help of this regulators you can see the regulators there are some pressure regulators there are some control valves which are responsible for controlling the flow of the gases within these pipes both these gases oxygen acetylene they pass through these rubber hose pipes and then they enter in this mixing chamber again in the mixing chamber what we are we are doing is we are controlling their flow with the help of the control valves separately meant for the acetylene gas as well as oxygen control gas once the mixing is done properly then through the torch it is been passed at the end where by lighting the flame combustion of these gases is developed and this flame is sufficient enough to melt the work pieces so normally the temperature developed is 3200 degrees 200 degrees celsius but this temperature is not the same for all the metals for some metals we need the temperature more than 3200 degrees celsius for some metals lesser than this one also so again we have to control their flow as the flow of the gases we are controlling even the flame structure is also been changing which we will discuss in the next slide that is regarding the flames so you can see here we are having different flame structures under the heading known as types of oxyacetylene flames so the main three important flames are the neutral flame oxidizing flame the second one and the third one is the reducing flame or a carburizing flame also so for each flames they are having their own temperatures for neutral flame 3260 degrees celsius for oxidizing flame 3500 degrees celsius for reducing or carburizing flame 3066 degrees celsius initially let us discuss with each flame one by one initially to obtain a neutral flame what we do is through the oxygen cylinder and the acetylene cylinder equal proportions i repeat equal proportions or equal quantity of both the gases they are taken through this rubber pipes and they are mixed in this chamber they are mixed in this chamber which means equal quantity of both the gases oxygen as well as acetylene and the mixture of these gases then passing to the torch coming at this end torch tip end the flame is ignited so the ignited flame it is in this fashion the color physical appearance it is in this fashion at the center there is a whitish cone which is surrounded by outer blue envelope blue flame colored envelope so this physical appearance of the flame in this fashion represents it is a neutral flame which is consisting of or which is developed by the combustion of the mixture of acetylene and oxygen gases which are taken in equal proportions that is a mixture of equally of both the gases so this leads to a temperature of around 3260 degrees celsius and this temperature is responsible for joining the cast iron steel aluminum and other metals also if we want to increase if you want to increase the quantity of only oxygen gas then once the neutral flame is developed once the neutral flame is developed at this torch tip end here we are closing the acetylene control valve we are closing the acetylene control valve which means what happens only high amount of oxygen is entering 
more quantity of oxygen is present in this mixing chamber and only less amount of acetylene is present so the quantity of oxygen is more and acetylene content is less then uh, the resulting flame color changes to this fashion that is uh, there is a shorter inner white cone which is surrounded by a narrow blue flame blue envelope this is uh, the representation of oxidizing flame so the oxidizing flame is developed only when uh, the quantity of oxygen supplied is more when compared to the acetylene gas so when the oxygen is more when compared to acetylene gas in the mixing chamber combustion is complete there is complete combustion and again there is some excess of, of oxygen is present that is the reason that the temperature is around 3500 degrees celsius which is responsible for joining copper based and zinc based metals then again if you want to develop uh, the reducing flame again we go back to the uh, previous step of uh, the neutral flame itself here now what we do is we stop or we stop the flow of oxygen entering this chamber we are increasing the flow of uh, acetylene gas itself so after some time whatever the neutral flame is there due to the increase in content of the acetylene gas inside its color changes to this fashion why because more amount of or more supply of acetylene is done there is less amount of oxygen due to which you can see there is at the center one yellow colored structure is appeared which is known as intermediate acetylene feather this is because due to more amount of acetylene carbon content is increased when compared to the oxygen gas content as a result the combustion is incomplete and this incomplete combustion leads to the formation of three layered structures so again uh, inner white cone acetylene feather at the top outer envelope and the temperature is around 3066 degrees celsius this is suitable for joining a monel alloy or nickel copper alloy as well as some of the non ferrous metals also so totally in gas welding the flow of the these two gases oxygen and the acetylene in suitable proportions decides the structure of these flames remember once more if we have equal amount of oxygen and acetylene it is a neutral flame if the oxygen content is increased and the acetylene content is decreased then it is the oxidizing flame vice versa if the acetylene content is increased and the oxygen content is reduced then it is a carburizing or reducing flame so the advantages of oxyacetylene welding if you observe so it is a most versatile process as it can be used in almost all the types of manufacturing industries manufacturing processes and the very important feature of this one is you don't need to have a large size of equipment such as in arc welding machine we are discussing regarding the amount of ac or dc supply for the development of it only thing we need here is the two cylinders that is the oxygen and the acetylene gas cylinders so if these two gases are mixed together the help of flame itself the amount of heat is being developed to melt the work pieces which means the heat generation can be done very easily then compared to the other processes that is the arc welding process it is uh, cheaper and as the equipment cost is cheaper and is also it is uh, under less maintenance with less amount of cost that is cheaper it is inexpensive then here as we are selling that the flame itself is responsible for developing the heat we don't need to have a separate heat source so because of separate heat source the filler metal the control can be exercised on the rate and the filler metal goes on depositing over the layers itself in especially in the gas welding if you observe when compared to the arc welding process the rate of heating the workpiece metal as well as the cooling the workpiece metal it is slow when this happens the problems of oxidization or you can say the structural homogeneity is improving so no the chances of oxidation are reducing as a result it will retain the structural homogeneity very very easily then 
this gas welding is almost a portable device it is multifunctional as you can carry out very easily and you can use it for other applications such as even for torch brazing welding preheating and post heating also along with this advantages we are having some other disadvantages also some of them are already i told you when we are handling two important gases in the cylinders their safety plays a very 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 important role so if these gases are not uh, placed properly that is uh, if they are not sealed properly in the gas cylinders it may lead to even some explosions also which means possible hazards then the flow of these gases from these cylinders it has to be maintained properly using the help of the pressure regulators control valves and other valves also then handling and storage of the gases is not an easy job it has to be done very carefully they have to kept very free from flammable things then another important thing here is in the arc welding i was telling you that once the arc is developed between the electrode and the workpiece within less amount of time the workpiece melts there but here the flame first which is ignited it has to heat the workpiece to some amount of time and then the melting is carried out which means the time required for joining process when compared to arc welding it is little bit more here especially in the gas welding now moving on to the next part this is also a type of welding we call it as a metal inert gas welding so here metal inert gas welding in the sense the electrode which we are using here it is a metal for joining the for joining the work pieces here you can join two or more work pieces at a time itself and when the electrode is been supplied for the joining of the work pieces simultaneously an inert gas is also surrounding this electrode to prevent the oxidation as well as the porosity and some material defects also that is the reason that we call this technique as metal inert gas welding technique so it, it is a thing what it is also similar to an arc welding technique itself only the thing is here we are using uh, an metal as an consumable electrode which may weld two or more work pieces and this consumable electrode if you observe in this picture this pink color structure it is a thing but surrounded by an uh, inert gas so the inert gas normally we may use argon helium neon or any other gases which are there responsible for producing good perfect joints and are very easily available so if you observe in the figure it is mainly consisting of an electrode feed through which the electrode is supplied consumable electrode inert gas supply then we are having the work pieces and you can see where there is a small gap between the work piece and the electrode so already discussed in the arc welding machine an arc when it is stuck between the workpiece and the electrode it is sufficient enough the heat developed is sufficient enough to weld the workpiece another important feature of this uh, electrode that is the metal inert gas welding is this electrode itself acts as a consumable electrode and it is almost a filler material also which means you don't need to have separate filler material in this case as it goes on developing the arc and the metal metal joining process is being carried this arc is surrounded by this inert gas so the inert gas which is released here it acts as a shield so this shield it protects the arc between the workpiece and the electrode from oxidation from the porosity any gas deposits upon the joint so that there will be no any defects developed so as it is moving from one end to other end the joint developed is a perfect stable joint that is the reason that we call it as metal inert gas welding so already i have told you so here the arc melts the electrode itself and the electrode is a consumable electrode and it itself acts as a filler material it is having some of the advantages as i was telling you as we are having a a feed for this electrode if you see here through this part itself uh, we are feeding the electrode which means uh, there is a uh, through only one angle or one point itself we can feed the electrode and the joining has to be carried out in a same manner itself that is uh, the position of the electrode has to be done in a uh, 90 degrees to the workpiece which you are seeing in the figure right now so here the consumer electrodes we can feed it very easily then as this consumable electrode is itself acts as a filler material we don't need to have external filler rod 
welding is very simple and the inert gas which is released during the welding process it acts as a shield to prevent it from oxidation porosity or any material defects also but along with this we are having some more disadvantages if you observe the disadvantages if uh, during the welding process if you are not having a skilled laborer or a skilled worker there are chances that there will be floating of solid impurities over the weld if this happens then the weld whichever it is carried it becomes porous in nature which means the strength of the weld is weaker and its life durability decreases along with this when the operator is working on the mig weld that is the metal inert gas welding he should have proper safety measures wearing some masks around because the inert gases which they are developed they are dangerous and they may cause even some damage to the workers also they are hazardous gases and always care should be taken to avoid the formation of less ductile welds such that you can develop continuous joints perfect joints and their strength may be increased apart from this the work pieces and electrode almost after their welding process as well as before sorry before the welding process they should be cleaned properly such that once the process is going to be initiated there be should be no problems to carry out the welding process this is regarding metal inert gas welding moving on to the next the tungsten inert gas welding it is also similar to the metal inert gas welding itself but only thing if you observe in the picture here you may use or you may not use the filler rod depending upon the types of work piece metals which you want to join so it is not mandatory that you need not use a filler material because here here when you are joining some of the metals such as zinc copper and other metals sometimes there will be use of the filler material we have to use this but for others such as steel aluminum there will not be the use of filler materials in which in simple words what i would i should convey is filler metal may or may not be preferred it depends upon which type of work pieces you want to join them then apart from this it is also known by another one name known as gas tungsten arc welding and here in the electrode whatever the material is sorry here in the electrode feed layer pipe the electrode which is being used it is a tungsten electrode it is a tungsten electrode and it is a non consumable type it is a non consumable type because its temperature is around 3400 to 2422 degrees celsius which is more than the melting point of the work piece metals as a result it is a non consumable type then you may use the filler rod or you may not use a filler rod then apart from that the feed of the tungsten rod especially for this uh, tungsten and gas welding it need not to be fed in this manner itself that is 90 degrees to the work piece you can feed it in any directions also that is the important peculiarity of this one other than this the other things such as once the arc is being developed this arc is being surrounded by the inert gas itself to provide the gaseous shield and prevent the porosity the oxidization the defects of the metal surfaces and the other things they are the same as compared to the metal inert gas welding itself here also if you go for we are having some of the advantages for the tig welding as i told you this is inert gas welding where the tungsten metal has highest welding temperature it provides good and high quality welds which means the strength of the weld is very very good and its durability is more so when the welding is automatically provided by inert gas so there is no problem of porosity or oxidization so here also in the we are using the tungsten as a non consumable electrode there is no slag formation and it can be done in any position but there are some disadvantages that the joining process rate that is the time required when compared to the mig welding tig welding is a slow process it requires more time to carry complete the tig joining process we need to have skilled laborers especially the knowledge of uh, how to feed the tungsten electrode how it has to be joined and other things and it requires more time so the uniform joining has to be done then a welder which who is working on this one he should be exposed to huge intensities of light such that he should be very much capable of doing the work carefully and in cost wise if you go 
as the tungsten is a metal which is uh, having its higher melting temperatures even it is more expensive when compared to mig welding so only for particular applications such as uh, the development of uh, the rockets aeroplanes or where we need exact welding process we prefer the tig welding when compared to mig welding process thank you students